damn, jumping on the Clan Gen Challenge bandwagon, here we go. If you don't know what the one year clan gen challenge is, it's basically you play a year of clan gen and then at the end you draw all the cats and talk about how you interpret what's going on in the game. Turn it into a story. Fun shit. So the way I set, set this up was I spent a good 20 minutes searching for a bird name I could use on the clan because I'm legally obligated to name it after a bird. I settled on Swallow Clan. Then I took a random number generator to decide the starting season, landed on winter. I have mass extinction on as well as affairs, cats being able to have kids with an unknown mate, and cats being able to have kids without having a mate first. Same sex breeding is not on because even Without it, they still find ways to have babies, and I am not giving them another, not with all those other settings on, no sir. I will draw the cats in allegiance order. I may or may not decide to draw them with another cat if I am attached to not enough to their relationship, in which case the allegiance order does not matter to me. I won't draw dead cats unless I really feel like it. The way I approach the challenge will be balanced around me juggling shit like applying to college and not failing my senior year of high school, the real challenge. So we will see how this unfolds. It's gonna be slow, that's about the one concrete thing. First, here's the quick lore rundown. Swallow Clan used to live on another mountain before a bunch of two legs moved in with an obscene amount of monsters and started ripping apart the mountain. A mining operation. They don't know that. Heather Starr, at the time Heather Ivy, gathered as many cats from their large loner colony as she could with the help of a few other cats to get everyone to safety. They lost a lot of cats before they got moving because a lot of them were too stubborn to leave. Heather Ivy saw a flock of migrating cliff swallows, which she'd never seen before, and convinced everyone that it was a sign from Star Clan. So they fo followed the flock to another mountain and settled in. On the way there, they picked up some cats who were interested in the safety of a large group. When they arrived on the mountain, the, the colony cats split into four smaller clans, Heather Ivy taking up leadership of Swallow Clan and naming it after the bird that brought them here. The first year was actually more eventful than I expected it to be, mostly in the form of a bunch of kits being brought to the clan and cats getting injured left and right. I'll talk about all that when it comes up with the cats, so let's get into it. We'll start with talking about the dead cats. We have Sky Paw and Emerald Paw. Sky Paw is the Star Clan guide. She was the one to propose splitting the colony to, to the cats who would become the four leaders. Not much is known about who she is or was. Emerald Paw was an abandoned kit that Splinter Paw and Sunny Freckle found on the first moon, and she died from eating a sick rabbit that she caught on patrol at the age of one year. There's not much else to say about her other than she was Heather Star's apprentice, and it's unfortunate she died so close to getting her warrior name. Heather Star is the leader of Swallow Clan. She's very bold and outwardly confident. She does worry if she's doing her job well and is consistently looking for better ways to provide for her clan. She's considered expanding the borders so that they'll have more land to hunt on, and on the ninth moon of the year, fought a big dog on her own and broke a bone because it had gotten too close to the camp and there wasn't time to get back up. She did drive the dog off and absolutely refuses to admit that she may have made a reckless and stupid decision. On moon five, she took on Emerald Paw as an apprentice. They weren't particularly close, but she was still somewhat shaken when Emerald Paw died. Heather Star knows she couldn't have done anything to prevent her death since she was in the medicine den because of her injuries at that point, but she wishes she could have done something. Other than that, Heather Star hasn't done that much this year, partially due to being stuck in the medicine den for three months now. Currently, she's closest with Chirptail, which is awkward because Chirptail doesn't particularly like her. She's decently good friends with Sunny Freckle and Fierce Claw, who is her deputy, and she gets along well, uh, well enough with the medicine cat Lionbrook. She's not close close with any of them, though. Hopefully she makes some more friends next year. Next up, we have Fierce Claw. He was originally part of the colony and was a huge asset in getting everyone moving and keeping everyone fed over the journey, which made him Heather Star's first pick for deputy. Towards the beginning of the year, he was having some difficulty keeping up with his duties, but he seemed to finally find his footing. He didn't do all too much that this year, and on Moon 10, he fell into a nearby river and got water in his lungs. He's been in the medicine den ever since, which he doesn't like very much. Uh, he's still been doing his job organizing patrols and everything, because whatever Lionbrook says be damned, he is not going to sit around and do nothing for an elongated period of time. In terms of his relationships, he's basically in love with Sunny Freckle, who also happens to be his best friend. He's also close with friends with Chirptail, and is pretty close with Lionbrook and Lemon Ember. He also has a very tiny crush on Lionbrook, which she reciprocates about the same amount. I don't really think it's gonna go anywhere, though. Now on to Lionbrook, the medicine cat. She was a loner who joined the colony on their way to the new territory, noticing that they might need her herb expertise. Her little brother Squirrel Feather chose to join her, but more on him later. Funnily enough, every single cat in a leadership position currently can't do their job. At least no one in the clan is the type of cat to make a power grab. Lionbrook is currently pregnant, and since she doesn't explicitly have a mate, no one knows who the other parent is. This year she's had her work cut out for her, but she's taking it in stride. She's had to deal with a food poisoning incident that led to the death of the oldest apprentice in the clan, the leader getting beat up by a dog, the 
the deputy falling in the river and inhaling water, a warrior getting grabbed and dropped by an eagle, another warrior getting his leg damaged in a two-leg trap, an apprentice getting mauled by a fox, and now herself being pregnant and unable to help. It's no wonder she took an apprentice as soon as Sunny Freckles' litter was six moons old. She chose Posypaw, having kept her eye on him for pretty much his entire kidhood, and she's very close with him, though he doesn't think much of her quite yet. She feels bad about the timing of her pregnancy, leaving her new apprentice to deal with her injured deputy leader and his own injured littermate with barely any help, but she's confident he can handle it. Her best friend is Chirptail, and she enjoys Fierce Claw, Sunny Freckle, Heather Star, and Lemon Ember's company. She's not too cr close with her brother Squirrel Feather since they're from separate litters and 42 moons apart in age. Lionbrook is also notably good with kits, allowing Dazzle Kit and the others to play in her den as long as they don't ruin the herb stores, and thinking about it, how, how the kits of the clan are doing. She's very excited to be having her own litter, but is also anxious to get back to her job, multiple reasons why she wants the kits to arrive already. As stated before, Posypaw is Lion Brook's apprentice. Being chosen as a medicine cat apprentice was about the last thing he expected to happen, but he hasn't argued and has been doing his best. He's surprisingly insightful for his age, which is why Lion Brook chose him in the first place. Unfortunately, sometimes he's a bit of a do thing and think it through later type. He talks a lot, a trait that he retained from Kithood, although he has learned to control his volume better. He likes to spend time with his littermates and father doing warrior apprentice things, but since Lion Brook is now in the nursery full time, he hasn't really had the time. Thankfully, so Sunny Freckle has been keeping him company as he does his job. He really does love his father and is glad he has him to talk to while he takes care of the clan in Lionbrook's absence. He's not particularly close with anyone else yet, including his two siblings. Sunny Freckle is up next. He was originally part of the colony and he's the most senior warrior in the clan. He does not act like it at all. He enjoys pulling pranks on his clanmates and has been lectured by Fierce Claw about how he conducts himself before. His disregard for the rules is just driven home by the fact that he brought home three half-clan kits. He's not stupid, though, and didn't tell anyone where he found them for fear of them being ostracized. He doesn't think that would happen, but everyone is trying to keep up the whole new borders thing and he's just not willing to risk it. After the kits were born, he and his mate agreed to stop seeing each other just in case. He loves his kits and he doesn't regret his choices in the slightest. He's good friends with pretty much everyone in the clan except Dazzle Wish. It's not not that they don't like each other, they just don't mesh well and therefore keep their interactions mostly to work. He's very sociable with pretty much everyone else and has no problem whatsoever making friends. He's very close with Chirptail, Squirrel Feather, Splinter Stripe, Glow Dusk, and Fierce Claw, who he started to develop romantic fe feelings for. Not as much as Fierce Claw likes him, but they get along very well and I wouldn't be surprised if they ended up together in the next few years. I'm actually hoping for that to happen because they are very cute. This year he also mentored Splinter Stripe and they came out of that experience very close. He wonders if he could have done more to help her with her insecurities, but now the best he can do is just be there for her. The next cat in the Allegiance is a Squirrel Feather. As stated before, he's Lion Brook's little brother and came with her because he wanted to see more of the world and was getting incredibly antsy just hanging around his parents and siblings all the time. He's kind of just a guy, honestly. He hasn't done too much this year. He got his paw stuck in a two-leg trap and was badly injured, but it healed just fine, thankfully. At the end of the year, he was caught outside the clan's territory. He feels bad about that, but really, he just wanted to explore and didn't think it was hurting anyone. He's good friends with Chirptail, who I think is just everyone's best friend at this point. The guy scares me. Uh, Squirrel Feather is also close with Heather Star, Sunny Freckle, Lion, Brook, Splinter Stripe, and Glowdusk. Oddly enough, he has some beef with Dazzle Wish because of something that happened four moons ago. It's not that bad, and hopefully he gets over it. Next up is Lemon Ember. Before I get talking about him, I just want to say that this is the best randomly generated name I have ever seen. Absolutely fantastic. Love him dearly. He was originally part of the colony. Lemon Ember is only two years old and has basically been turned into the de facto mentor of the clan because he's just so good at it, rivaled only by his former apprentice Dazzle Wish. He mentored both both Glowdusk and Dazzle Wish this year. At the moment, he doesn't have an apprentice, which he is happy about. Mentoring two apprentices in a year is a lot of work for someone so young. On the second moon of the year, he received a vision from Star Clan. It could have been a warning about literally any of the injuries that happened this year, but he and Lionbrook guessed that it was about Glowdusk's run-in with an eagle. He spent a lot of time this year just hanging around when he wasn't busy with his duties. He's very close with someone you would probably expect to appear here again, because he's just like that. Chirptail. Again. The guy's best friends with everyone, I swear. Lemon Ember is also good friends with Splinter Stripe and Lionbrook, who he actually has a crush on. He gets along well with everyone else in the clan, getting along with his former apprentice is a little better than the others. 
Glowdusk was one of the apprentices when the clan was founded. He was only an apprentice for a month, though, and then received his warrior name. He was honored for his spirit. He's a little childish, but very smart. He mentored Sharptail. On Moon 5, he was grabbed and dropped by an eagle, landing him in the medicine den for a whole five months with a broken bone that got infected at one point. He also came out as a trans man on the last moon of the year, which is why I am drawing him with a little trans heart, because I automatically get it very attached to any cat that comes out as trans. Anyway, he was mentored by Lemon Ember, who is only two moons older than him. Lemon Ember helped him become more consistent and bend the rules, and helped him become a better problem solver. Out of anyone, Glowdusk is closest to Sunny Freckle. He likes Chirptail, Dazzlewish, Lionbrook, and Heatherstar as well, but isn't too close with anyone else. I am wishing this little man all the best. I love him. Next is Splinterstripe, who was an apprentice with Glowdusk at the beginning of the year. They found her on the journey to the New Mountain and took her in because she didn't have anywhere else to go. She wasn't alone for long after Glowdusk graduated because Chirp Kit and Dazzle Kit were apprenticed two months after he graduated. She's glad that she had them with her during the remainder of her apprenticeship and is still friends with them, although she likes them both more than they like her. She was... Mentored by Sunny Freckle, who taught her to try to avoid violence and to break away from the status quo, as well as helped her get better at swimming, which is about the one thing she feels confident in herself to do. When she graduated, she was honored for her vigilance, which is, sure, a funny way to word it. She's been very insecure for most of her life, and it doesn't seem to be getting any better. All year, she's been worrying about something or other, mostly if she's fit to be part of the clan. On the first moon of the year, she and Sunny Freckle found Emerald Kit on patrol. She didn't end up very close to the kit. She's very close with her former mentor, as well as Chirp Tail and Dazzle Wish. She likes Lemon Ember well enough. Now for the guy himself, Chirptail. He was one of the kits at the founding of the clan, and they basically found him on the side of the road holding up an up for adoption sign on the journey. Somehow every older cat loves him. He does not know why. He doesn't have a problem with it, but he's not that close with most of them. Chirptail was mentored by Glowdusk, who he's still decently close with. Glowdusk taught him to use words over violence and to interact with others, so I think we can firmly blame Glowdusk for how Chirptail has managed to make every older cat in the clan think he's the best. When he graduated, he was honored for his lightheartedness and humor. He hasn't always been such an upbeat cat, though. When he was first apprenticed, he wondered if this was the right path for him, and later on, when Glowdusk was in the medicine den, he had a breakdown over feeling like a failure. Thankfully, Sunny Freckle helped him through it. He was mostly mentored by Sunny Freckle, actually, since Glowdusk was stuck in the medicine den for a lot of his apprenticeship. He's quite close with Sunny Freckle because of this. He has a bit of a tendency to complain about doing his duties, but in the end he does them and hasn't caused any problems. His best friend is definitely Lionbrook, a relationship that started in his apprenticeship and grew to the two of them goofing off together when he became a warrior. He's pretty good friends with Fierce Claw and enjoys Lemon Ember's company quite a bit. He gets along well with everyone else except he Heather Star and Baypaw. I hope he grows out of his dislike for Baypaw because that is a whole ass child he dislikes more than the leader and it just feels a little unfair if you ask me. Dazzle Wish is the other original baby of the clan, but she was born as a single kit on the journey to a mother who didn't make it. She's a sweet and very compassionate cat, and spends a lot of time around her clanmates trying to make them feel better in various ways. At first, I thought she might become a medicine cat, but she didn't, and I'm glad I didn't go in and change it because she's actually a fantastic warrior. She graduated early at 10 moons old and was honored for her emotional maturity. She was mentored by Lemon Ember, who taught her to be ready for a fight and be resilient, as well as taught her to be an excellent teacher, which is why Heather Star gave her Ochre Paw to mentor so young. As soon as she was apprenticed, she asked Lemon Ember if they could go gather moss so everyone could have fresh bedding. Dazzle Wish was poisoned in the sick rabbit incident that killed Emerald Paw, but recovered well. She cares a lot for Heather Star, who unfortunately doesn't think that much of her, but past that, she gets along well with most everyone in the clan, except for Fierce Claw, who doesn't seem to notice that she dislikes him. For some reason, she ever so slightly dislikes Baypaw and Posy Paw because of things that happened while they were kits. She doesn't let her dislike of anyone get in the way of treating them everyone the same, though. I'm excited to see where Dazzle, Dazzle Wish goes next year. Now we're on to the other two apprentices. Baypaw is first. Currently, Baypaw is stuck in the medicine den after getting mauled by a fox. She's childish but quick-witted and spends a lot of time goofing off and not taking things seriously. She's being mentored by Glowdusk but doesn't really have any thoughts on him. She's very close with her father, Sunny Freckle, and really likes Fierce Claw as well. She's noticed how much the deputy likes her father and is definitely observing. She would not complain if the two got together. Not at all. She's kind of rooting for Fierce Claw to say something to Sunny Freckle, actually. She's decently close with her siblings, but like, he hasn't been spending too much time with Urkerpaw because of how she started to act. She likes Lemon Ember a little, and I'd like to see the two become friends. She doesn't like Dazzle Wish because of an argument they had when Baypaw was a kit. There's not much else to say about Baypaw. I hope she recovers from the fox attack and makes some more friends next year. 
Okerpaw is Sunny Freckles' second daughter. She was a bullying kit and is now cold. Heatherstar asked Dazzlewish to mentor her in hopes that her compassionate nature would rub off just a little. So far, it's going okay. They don't dislike each other, but they aren't that close. She loves her father and is fine with her siblings. She doesn't like Lionbrook that much and doesn't have thoughts on the rest of the clan. She was the third cat poisoned in the incident that killed Emerald Paw and recovered a moon into her apprenticeship. There's not much else to say about her. Hopefully she becomes a little nicer next year. And that is year one. I hope you enjoyed it. I should be making more of these whenever I can because I really like this challenge. I think it is very fun and it makes the Warriors kid in me very happy. Oh, what else? Uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, tell me who your favorite cat is. My top favorite is Lemon Ember. He is very silly. Yes. Uh, drink some water, eat some food if you haven't, and have a nice day.